All right, this next one, we're gonna, we're gonna do it. But if this wood shears off, if this wood, piece of wood shears off, Let me see if I can try to draw this in 3D. Um, it would kind of shear off like this. And so this is the area that I need to do my V and N divided by. So do you see how I think it's helpful to go ahead and fail. Go ahead and separate it. Go ahead and make it fall, up, break apart so that you can see that area. <clears throat> but I'll come back to that. This is how a bolt might shear. Okay. This is how a bolt might shear. And so go ahead and fail. And what area it would be that circular area of a bolt that is the area that the shear force acts. Okay. All right. Uh, all right. Let's go back to this one right here. So, all right. Board is subjected to a tensile force of 200 pounds. Determine the average normal stress and the average shear stress in the wood fibers. So we're trying to find the stress at 20 degrees. So you see how that's why I went ahead and cut it. I went ahead and cut it at that 20 degrees. So this is the area. Um, I need to find that N right there. I need to find this V right there. All right, so I, if I have, uh, I have kept this left-hand side. Uh, I've got 200 acting that way. Let me sum my forces uh, to solve for N and V. So summing the forces in X, 200. Mm, hmm. mm, what should I choose as my axes? I was about to keep these as my axes. Maybe, maybe I should do that. Um, that wouldn't be, wouldn't be terrible, but I've, I've actually changed my axes to be along, uh, 20 degrees. All right. That way, uh, V is only in the X equation that I'm about to write. N is only in the Y equation. <clears throat> if I had kept my usual axes, it would have been fine. I would have had like, V cosine 20 in my X equation, V sine 20 in my Y. I'd have N sine 20 in my X, you know. But I, I would end up with two equations with two unknowns. Here, by rotating my axis, I'm going to end up with one equation, one unknown, one equation, one unknown. But here, I don't know if this uh, makes sense. This would be 200 uh, cosine 20. Yeah. I need to break this up into its two components. All right, I would get V, 187.94 pounds, summing the forces in Y, N, and then 200 sine 20 in 68.4 pounds. All right. And that's, well, that's one part of it, you know, finding that V and N. And in this case, because it was at an angle, I couldn't take any shortcuts. I really need to cut it and solve for N. Cut it and solve for V. All right, but the area that it's acting, 68.4 pounds, what area is it acting? Uh, it's acting over this area right here, which is really just a rectangle. It has two inches as its base, and it has this length right here as its um, hypotenuse, it has that inch, that four inches right there. How can we find, how about, look at that blue triangle right here, 20 degrees, four, so sine 20 equals four over hypotenuse. I really should just calculate this, four, all right. Anyway, this, I'll call it hypotenuse. 
4 over sine 20. All right. So the area right here, 2, 4 over sine 20. That pink area that my normal force is acting and my shear force is acting. Two point nine two pounds per square inch. Two point nine two pounds per square inch. The tau one eighty seven point nine four. Same area two four over sine twenty. Uh, is eight point oh three. PSI. All right, so solve for N and V and then divide, think and divide and visualize, divide by that area that the N and V are acting on. And I don't know if, I don't know if the figure was clear I think it's more clear when you really separate it, shear it apart, fail it, pull it apart to find that area. Okay.